what is the largest Iron Age artifact that we have uncovered or know of so far in Europe and where does it come from? I would have guessed Britain or maybe Greece, pre-Roman mind. But neither of these are correct. And this is Benjamin. Today we're looking at what is this thing? What we're talking about is the Gundestrup cauldron. This thing is extraordinary. The largest known silverworking artifact we have from the late Iron Age is a cauldron. This one here. It's from about 150 BCE to the first century. which firmly places it in the Latin culture, cultural time frame, Celtic, just before Rome, spread over Europe from the Danube up into the Upper Rhine. And it was found in 1891 in a peat bog. Now, peat bogs are interesting because they preserve things in very unusual conditions, which is why Ireland, strangely enough, has kept quite a few of its older artifacts as well. So wherever you see these kinds of landscapes in Europe, we get artifacts that survive for longer than they would in the open air. The, the thickness and the, the density of the peat protects it. But the point is that in this area of Himmerland in Denmark in 1891, this cauldron was found. It's now kept in the National Museum of Denmark or the National Museet. I don't know if I said that right. Quite a nice thing to have in your national museum, I would say. It's got exterior and interior plates. I mean, there's nothing like this, of this size and scale. This thing is 69 centimeters wide and 42 centimeters high. That's like two and a half feet by a foot and a half. That's, for something of that to have survived is massive. And it doesn't seem to have been by one metal smith. It's by at least three people. There's differences subtle in the work. It was a team of craftsmen who put this thing together probably paid for by a wealthy king. The cauldron is not entirely complete, but it is mostly so. It's got all these beautifully inlaid panels, front and back, and the base of it has this beautiful display here, this animal lying down. It's a decorated medallion depicting a bull with a female figure wielding a sword. Three dogs are also shown. Presumably all these figures are some kind of combat or hunt. All the panels of this, there's related motifs to different periods in Celtic, what we think is Celtic mythology, it shows a progression. In fact, you could debate that there's scenes from the Mabinogion, the Welsh tales on this, and this horned figure, Cernunos, is a god. I've mentioned him in more than one video, I think, now, and these are depicting not only Welsh or Celtic mythology, rather, but it seems different phases of it as well, blending with mythology. Mythology and history well up almost into the early modern period, blended, and there was no clear distinction. These gods that we see on the cauldron, they would have seen as some type of ancestor. Probably right to rule for someone's inheritance. You get a boar. 
you get Karnix, a group of Karnix players. This was a, a Celtic war horn, but it would have been used probably in the Balkans as well, and that's important for this. We get images of what we think is Taranis, the god of thunder and the wheel. And so, it's not just that we see Celtic myths, it's that they're in a progression, a sequence. And what this cauldron may be doing is depicting some type of history of a people in their mythological ideas. But which one? Which people? We don't know who exactly. But we know that the silver of this is unusual. Because... Silver working was not a traditionally, at least in this size, a Celtic thing to do. And it gives us an idea of where this cauldron may be from, actually. I've mentioned in my videos on Celtic Romania and Dacia, Dacia. Those people in present day Romania, as part of a wider Balkans culture, were using silver. They were very much working with it. And this may be when the Celts went down into the Balkans, mixed with those peoples, the Skordiski, present day Serbia, a Celtic group there, and were in a peaceful arrangement with the locals. And they fused the arts together of their two cultures. That may be what we're looking at here, because there's also Eastern motifs, like animals that are almost Anatolian or Babylonian in this. Many animals on the cauldron include elephants, dolphin, leopards, or leopard-like felines. And these elephants may depict Hannibal crossing the Alps because many Celts fought with him. And this may be a blending of history and mythology because looking back into their own past they were trying to assess who they were but we don't know exactly what these elephants are and fantastic animals that were widespread across Eurasia that's not like Celtic stuff at all and Celtic art at the time we're not seeing animals that are morphing in different parts in Celtic displays, we get specific animals. There's not the blend. And on some of these panels, we're getting a blend which clearly comes from an Eastern source. Some of these Eastern images even have semblance to Assyrian Empire motifs. Babylonian. You don't find that in Celtic art. These winged creatures spread, flanking heads, griffins from Greek. Whoever put this together, they were showing their power through multicultural art. A boy riding a dolphin is clearly borrowed from Greek art, and a lot of this looks Thracian. Maybe even Scythian, but there were similar silver workings in Thrace at the time. And if it is Celtic, then what happened? This being of silver with repousse, meaning that you bang the inside of the metal sheet to pop out indentations and designs on the outside. That's very Balkan as well, but it's also Gaulish. The way in which the silver sheets were combined and there's an iron ring, that's Gaulish. And the Celtic parts are Gaulish in aesthetic. Some of the worksmanship does suggest northeastern France or Brittany in terms of the types of craftsmanship. That doesn't mean that it was made there, but maybe someone from there partook in shaping this thing. 
they would have been Gaulish speaking clearly at the time. But the silver working and the Eastern echoes are very Thracian. It's clearly a fusion of Gaulish and Thracian, but how did it get from there all the way up to Denmark? And why did they leave it in this peat bog? We don't know. What is clear, however, is that it was put in this peat bog maybe two or three centuries after being created. So it was a prized possession taken care of, and the plates put in this peat bog were carefully laid onto each other. Maybe it was hidden from enemies. No one knows, but it was carefully intended to be preserved. There was value seen in this, and there's evidence of it being repaired and worked on multiple times, fixed and there's some people that suggest that these people, the Kimri, a Germanic people who invaded the Roman Empire later, the Kimri may have gone down into the Balkans and taken this thing back up. It's a bit far-fetched, but we don't know how it got up there. We don't really have any other better theory as to how this thing arrived in Denmark. But what's interesting about it is this fusion of Thracian and Gaulish Celtic found in a Germanic land. I just wanted to show you that to show you not just that the peoples of this time were blending with each other, but the art was creating new ways, especially the silver. It was changing in the late Iron Age, adopting new cultures up through the Danube especially, and it's probably where this cauldron comes from, though it could come from northeastern France and Brittany, possibly, but we just don't know. Thank you to my Patreons for supporting the channel, and everyone. Each of you who watches, we'll see you next time.